critical. And, you know, I see leaders hiding behind um, their their title and uh, politics and things. And what I love about your uh, comments is really the, the highest form of, you know, it's really interesting because and Stacy said that the, the highest form of love is success.com through your own clubhouse. And this is the Achievers Breakfast Club. Uh, so if you've not done so yet, make sure you click the little green house up at the top. Make sure you join us so that you're, you'll get notified every time uh, that we open up. And, of course, when do we open up? Monday through Friday from 7 o'clock to 8.30 Eastern. Uh, this is where we come for our, our daily dose. We get uh, a, little, uh, a little inspiration. We get some tips and strategies uh, to take us from where we are to where we want to go. And today we are talking to the one and only Sam Silverstein, which, of course, we are honored to do. Uh, every day, Monday through Friday. But today we are highlighting Sam because he came out with his new book. Uh, so today we are talking about being accountable, and Sam certainly is. Uh, aside from being a Hall of Fame speaker, this is it, this is his eleventh book. Uh, honored to call you a friend uh, and uh, like really family at this point, right? I mean, we've been hanging out for the last uh, six or seven months, or however long it's been. Uh, so he is the master of accountability. So we are discussing uh, all things accountability with uh, the one and only Sam Silverstein. So uh, what we would love everyone to do is hit that little plus sign down at the lower right-hand corner. Bring in those people that you know could and should be here uh, because we all need a little bit more accountability in our life. Um, and, you know, one of the things, of course, that uh, that I that, that I'm sure that 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 we've probably already touched on and we'll be speaking about is that that accountability itself because you know we we tend to look at accountability and we are accountable to other people yet really the, what we really need to be accountable to is ourselves and be better at that right because we're the ones that are watching um awesome thanks, okay Amanda, that's awesome Great. Okay. So this kind of reminds me, you know, I've gone through John Maxwell's coaching uh, or part of John Maxwell's coaching stuff. And I remember him making a comment once about, you know, how Americans don't like to be accountable, which you already addressed. We don't like to be accountable and be told what to do. And he was talking about just how even like Japan, how accountable they are to everything. But that being said, when Michelle asked the question, it made me think of, um, and, and, uh, Don, you know Howard Brenton in the real estate world and all of our real estate agents, if you've been around for a while, Howard Brenton was uh, an influence, a high influencer in the real estate industry. And I remember once I was upset about something where my team members were not doing some stuff that, that following the system or doing something right. And he said to me, he said, you know, that's not their fault. That's your fault. That's the system's fault which kind of brings me to my question. So I'm a systems freak because I put everything in systems so the average person can deliver extraordinary service or extraordinary results or my results, whatever. So that that just makes it predictable. So one of the things I really talk about is how to get buy-in to the system so that you can trust the system and the system holds us accountable. So my question is, for me, how do you tie this relationship of accountability and buy-in, and how do you see that working together? Because um, you are the master of accountability. Well, I don't think the system holds you accountable. I think that um, that's responsibility. Remember, I said earlier on, um, we're responsible for things. We're accountable to people. Accountability exists between people. Um, that report's never going to hold me accountable. And I don't even like the term holding accountable. It's not going to even help me be accountable. So, so you know, you talk about systems. Systems are good. Remember, I, the tactical stuff still needs to get done. But if, you, if you're my leader, I report to you. If, if, if you're engaging with me, if you're getting to know me, if you are when things are working you're giving credit to us and when things aren't working you're stepping up and saying you let the team down not the team screwed up um if if you're coming to me and say sam you're doing an amazing job but you know what i think i think you'd even be more successful in this area 
let me get you some training and let me get you this and let me get you set up over here. And now you're trying to help me be my best. When you're when there's clarity in the values and the, and the values are good and you're stepping out those values, when your word is your bond, when when everything you say is always, always the whole story and is the truth, then what happens is I see you and go, I want to be like him. And I don't want to let him down because he would never let me down. So I'm going to do everything in my power to not let him down. And if everything in my power means I'm using the system, then that's what I'm going to do. And and using the system becomes the norm at that point. And so it, this is a relational issue. And the re- accountability is not a short-term fix. Accountability is not is not is not. Look, if you want in your organization great results this week, put a gun to someone's head. Tell them if they don't get great results, you're going to pull the trigger, and you'll get great results this week. But that's not going to work long term. What works long term is when we as leaders become accountable to the people so they're inspired to be their best. When we care about our people enough to to worry about their safety, their security, their success, and we continuously do that, and – when our values not only talk about our, our character, when they not only talk about what relationships are around here, when our values not only address our connection to the community, but they also address what professionalism is. When someone is continuously not living up to the standard from a functioning standpoint, and they've been coached and helped, and you let them go someplace else where that kind of behavior is acceptable – then people start to realize that around here we use the system because the system is what brings us success. And so it's not about the system as the starting point. The system becomes the end point. It's what we're motivated to do because we know it works. Because you set the standard that you want us to be our very best, that you care about us being our very best. And so that's where a lot of leaders mess up. They focus on the doing before they focus on the people. Focus on the people, and then the people will focus on the doing. Does that make sense, Brad? Oh, 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 oh. Yep, sorry, I was sliding around in screens. Absolutely, Sam. That is, oh my gosh, amazing. I'm like blown away right now. I just had my own little master class over here, but you guys were in on it, so I hope you got it too. Well, yeah, I was, and and I absolutely am glad you asked the question because again, we hear we hear these things, and it's not a, necessarily a, a misnomer. I love the translation that you're giving it, Sam. And I'm thinking about, you know, what I I think if I, I look at the hundreds of programs I've done and the conversations and leadership I've you know been involved in, meaning my own companies and all that, and when I look at where I've done it right, where I've really screwed up, and where I thought you know we could dictate something or where you know where other times we came in and really knew that it was as Jim Rohn would would have told me you know it's who you are that people are following you you know attractive people right get people to want to be around them and and how do we lead from that position and I think one of the things that I I'm it's coming to me here is that you know your work has always been about uh, empowering people to uh, live accountably and not to be held accountable, to live in accountability, to live through accountability, to, uh, you know, use that as the foundation and the belief systems for being a great leader. That makes more sense to me than, than even the holding somebody accountable. Cause I think of that all the time with coaching, I'm going to help hold the person accountable instead of I want to be the, the person who inspires them to be accountable and live accountably. That that makes more sense exactly. to me, Sam. It, it exactly. makes lots more sense to me as we're talking this through and I'm like, yeah, this is a this is a this is a complete shift in in uh, in phrasing and, and thought for me. And I say complete it's a it's a big shift for me to to really see it at its truest form, and I love the way you've divided out the, the you know the people part and the and maybe the structure part of the responsibilities versus the the accountability, right? I think that was one of my first thought, thoughts, and I started scratching my head, going, "That makes sense." So I'm really I'm really excited about where we're going with this. Uh, 
I know we're coming close to the top of the hour. I'm going to do a reset uh, sometime real soon. But let's get some more questions on the table here. We've got uh, Sam, Hall of Fame speaker, 